Folks, we have a great actress on with us. She's in a ton of different stuff. She was just on The Walking Dead that just aired a little while ago with Officer Shepard. She's in the upcoming, the new Terminator film, Terminator Genesis. She was in When the Game Stands Tall, and you guys know we love that film. We we talked about that, interviewed several of the cast members as well. And Earl, we'll talk about some of her other different credits that she's in, what she's been up to. Terry Weibel. Terry, how are you? Hey, I'm doing good. How are you? Oh, we're so blessed. Thanks for fitting us into your schedule. And, uh, so excited. You you have definitely landed in the middle of some pop culture circles, and it's got to be an exciting time for you and your career and that kind of thing. Is it, is it, does it feel that? Do you get a chance to even pause enough to appreciate, man, I'm, I'm, I'm now part of, like, the history of this stuff. Yeah, it's it's pretty crazy, you know. I'm I'm really just a small town girl, and uh, <laughs> and I'm still I still feel like I'm just a small town girl. I'm I'm here living in New Orleans and still able to do be in TV and film. I mean, I travel to Atlanta a lot, but um, it's just amazing that I could still be a part of of all of this and, and live here. Um, I'm I'm totally trying to take advantage of that, and it's uh, I definitely do take the time to stop and smell the roses absolutely <laughs> well she'll be forever known as officer shepherd on wiki walking dead pages across the world now um <laughs> it had to be a pretty exciting experience first to tell us a little bit about you know the casting process how you got the role and then you know give us a little idea of what it was like on set and what that experience was like sure um well, I had auditioned for The Walking Dead, and they always use code names, and they always send you fake um, fake lines and fake sides. And so half the time, I, I don't even know maybe that it's Walking Dead, or uh, but it was for a fake role and fake lines. And um, I think the, <laughs> it was pretty interesting, too. I was actually excited about it. It was for a uh, a professional safe cracker. And I'm like, okay. I need to go look that up. That sounds kind of cool. That seems like really badass. I'm like, okay. Um, so, but it ended after I booked the part. I was like, wait, I'm I'm a cop. Wait, what? <laughs> um, but so I was like, okay, let me go. Let me go do some some officer, some cop research, um, and prepare myself for that role. But um, but and then just being on set. Uh, Wow, I you know I I think I can honestly say that this was the best cast and crew that and that I've ever worked with, and and you know I'm I still feel so new to the industry, but just of the projects that I've worked on so far, just the crew, the cast and crew as a whole, it just seemed like a family. It seemed like everything that you you really want it to be, and it was comfortable and. Andrew Lincoln, Andy, everybody calls him, calls him Andy. Um, he was just so, so comforting to be around. Uh, he kind of, kind of controlled the show. He uh, very humbly <laughs> controlled everything. And uh, just having him around and seeing him every day, whether or not um, I was, I was doing anything with him or not, uh, I was able to meet a lot of the regulars and it was just, it was such a great experience. Now, did Nicotero direct Greg Nicotero? Sorry, folks, I know not of you are as geeky as I am. Did did he um direct that episode that you were in? Um, episode four, uh, Michael Satrazuma. Okay, Mike. Uh, he did, and uh, he's I think he's normally the DP on a lot of the episodes, but that that right. episode he directed, and um, and it was great. Uh, it was great uh, because. I think I'm, I'm like trying to like, <laughs> I'm trying to not, not give away anything. Um, <laughs> uh, he was just throughout the whole process. He, he was kind of like my buddy on the side. Um, and he, he'd be like, Terry, you're, you're doing such a great job. Just keep, keep doing it. Keep, you know? Um, and so he was, he was great to have throughout the whole process. Folks, I know I won't press her too much longer. Terry's not going to be able to say a whole lot more about the details. As far as I know, Officer Shepard's still not dead yet. So, you know, on a show like Walking Dead, you never know when she might pop up. So you want to make sure you stay tuned to that. Obviously, it's TV's biggest show, and it's got to be a great experience for her. Now, we have to move ahead to next summer. So your name will Mm -hmm. pop up through the course of the next 12 months as we uh, continue to work through the rest of Walking Dead, and we start to prepare for Terminator Genesis. Um. That in and of itself has got to be, I mean, you're just with huge names in this. Obviously, you know, Jason Clark and Amelia Clark. Um, but mostly, yeah. I want to ask you about working with Alan Taylor. How did the audition process work for that? And what has it been like being able to work with Alan? 
Oh, it was pretty darn cool. Um, the audition process, uh, let me think back. Um, Kulon Casting, it was, it's local casting here, um, Liz Kulon, and I went in for her. She knows me, and I went in for her um, once or twice, and then she brought me in again, and she's like, you know, you know, Terry, they, they like you, but they, you know, they really need somebody that's very direct, very strong. Um, she's like, they like you. They just want you to come back and do it with, uh, again with those notes. I'm like, okay. So I, I didn't really know too much about the part. They don't give away too many details. Sure. And um, so I did it again, and then shortly got a call after that. I, I booked it. I'm like, oh, my God, you know, <laughs> my boyfriend, who's also an actor, he was he was freaking out because he, he so wanted to be a part of this movie as well. Um, so we were both kind of freaking out. and um, But then – on set, uh, I I just had no idea. <laughs> Little did I know, just the the he. I mean, this is such a huge budget movie, and just to be a part of a project this size was uh, was really eye opening. And I got a lot of uh, practice under my belt on uh, kind of being a badass, if you will. Um, so that was that was really great. Actually, I we filmed. Terminator. I filmed all my stuff for Terminator um, before Walking Dead, so that was that was kind of like a pre. <laughs> it was really uh, getting me geared up. It war- the, uh, warmed you up for the zombie apocalypse, is what you're basically <laughs> confessing. Yeah. Absolutely, absolutely. Well, yeah, you... it's funny how how you kind of just put it in your mind. Like I, I want parts that are more, you know, not so much girly girl. I want some badass parts, and I just kind of put it out into the universe, you know. And it totally came back to me, and so I'm so happy for that. You know, based on what I know, and I don't know what you're allowed to say or not say, so, but I know that you have okay. scenes with Jason Clark. You're part of the, the Freedom Group and that kind of thing, and, and we don't know much else. We know there's a lot of time yeah. jump. We know Arnold's going to be, you know, with the younger Sarah Connor. That's Amelia Clark's character. And that kind of, what was it uh-huh. like working with um, Jason in particular? I mean, he has really just kind of exploded into superstardom after Zero Dark wow. Thirty, of yeah. course, the Planet Apes franchise. How how was he on set, and you know what was it like working with him so closely? I I'm such a, a little girl when it comes to uh, it's not it's not that that I'm ever starstruck because I'm I'm kind of used to this um, whole atmosphere being on set. I'm never really starstruck, but I wanna I wanna make sure to give actors. You never know if actors are trying to get in the moment or if they if they're really chatty or what scenes they're doing that day. If they have to cry that day or if they you know, it's really emotional. So I'm kind of, I'm a little standoffish, but I did get to work a lot with Jason Clark and, um, and gosh, he's, he's such a pleasure to watch. Um, and just working so closely with him. Uh, he's very professional, but at the same time, whenever he doesn't have, whenever the cameras aren't on him, he's just so laid back and making jokes and, um, just making everyone in the room feel comfortable down to the extras and background and features. Um, so that was, that was really comforting. It's amazing. That opens next summer, folks. You definitely don't want to miss that. I mean, it's going to be a massive turnout and I hate to leave these two big franchises behind. We have so much more to cover and I want to at least touch on um, when the game stands tall, because I thought it was definitely one of my, uh, favorite faith-based films of the year. I was just surprised at just how amazing this film actually was. And um, tell us a little bit about that experience. And you know, you were you were the other daughter, Jim Caviezel and Lori Dern play the the two uh, parents. They were the coach that was part of this, and you, I think you played the daughter. Uh, tell us a little bit about that uh, experience. Um. Well, uh, yeah, I I didn't have such a big part on it, but um, I don't know if you if you saw the movie, but. Uh, it was, I, I it saw was them. Nice... I, I love the movie. I love oh, it. I'm so glad. Yeah. We've talked to so about, glad. we've talked about three or four of the, uh, your fellow castmates about the, the grueling filming of football scenes and the emotional backstories. And yeah, we've <laughs> covered this movie extensively. So I was thrilled to see this on your resume as well. Yeah. Um, I, I think I was the most, uh, shocked that I was going to get to play the daughter of Jim Caviezel and Laura Dern. I was like, Wow. Okay, those are pretty cool movie parents. This is this is uh, going to be hard to top. Um, but so my my one little scene, but I think it was um, it was a it was a quality little scene where I come back to visit him. 
I had been away in college and uh, kind of come back to visit him, Jim Caviezel's character. And, um, and <laughs> Jim, uh, I was, I was a little, I was a little intimidated. I was like, oh man, he, he's like, Jesus, oh my God, I, it's, it's kind of, it's kind of intimidating. <laughs> and, um, but again, again, whenever the cameras weren't on him, he was like, Sneaking winks at me and, and you know cracking jokes as well and um, and it's great whenever I can see that side of an actor um, somebody as as big and as talented as he and Laura Dern was I mean I it seems like whenever I first met her on set um, I'm like thinking to myself have I have I met her before because she was so like oh you care oh you're playing our daughter oh hey hey girl come over here like. <laughs> I felt like she was really my mother. It just, it felt right. It felt right. <laughs> but, um, it was, it was a great experience. It was though, though very short, but, uh, I will always remember it. All right. So you have tons of other stuff on the resume. We could always talk about Green Lantern and the original Salem, uh, Broken City, Beautiful Creature, all these different projects, that kind of thing. So have there already been those kind of moments that people are stopping? You go, don't I know you in this? Or they recognize you? Or has the Walking Dead stuff already leaked into your life yet at the grocery store? I mean, how far along are we, Terry, where people are already picking you out of a crowd? <laughs> um, you know, thankfully... Uh, thankfully not too bad yet. I don't get much of that, but I'm very thankful because I, you know, (laughs) I pretty much, if I'm not at home learning lines or auditioning or out at an audition, I'm, I'm at home with my dog in my pajamas. I don't, I don't care if I'm going to the store in my pajamas. So I'm, I'm glad (laughs) that no one's, uh, noticed me quite yet. So I'd like to keep it that way for a while. (laughs) Can you give us a preview of some of the other projects you got coming up? Some other things that you uh, are working on? Um, yeah, um, I, you know, since I'm kind of wallowing in the uh, in the Walking Dead bliss lately, um, so that's been nice. And you know, people come out of the woodworks and, and people that I've gone to school with um, long, long ago are, are just coming out of the woodworks and, and saying congratulations, and that means so much. It means so much to me. Um, But stuff in the works, um, I have a short film that I'm about to work on, which my boyfriend, uh, Hunter Burke, who wrote, uh, he wrote a short film called Atchafalaya. He's also a writer. So that's, that's coming up, uh, later this month that we're going to film, uh, here in, in and around, uh, well, I wouldn't say New Orleans, but Lafayette, Acadiana, all in Louisiana. So, uh, that'll be close to home and really nice to do something that's that's so close to home and my culture um the cajun culture but uh but as of that man yeah wallowing in the in the in the walking dead list has been nice <laughs> well you and hunter you and her we interviewed hunter as well i did not know that you yes. were uh, you were the other half yes. of this so hunter yes I mean, hunter's <laughs> rather busy as well so it's not like you guys are sitting around you know with nothing to do we're we're keeping busy. We we do take the time to relax whenever possible. But uh, yeah, we're trying to stay busy. It's uh it's a great place to be. New Orleans is a great place to be. You know, he I think he might have mentioned that we kind of feel like a big fish in a small pond. Which I don't know if it's always going to stay like that because I know people from LA are moving here and there's just so much going on. But uh, we're just totally trying to take advantage of it and while we're still close to home. You know. Well, especially now that you're having this this great surge of success and some really fun and interesting roles people are going to be talking about and it will will exponentially continue to talk about, especially dependent as we start to unravel what your role in Walking Dead really is and how long you're a part of that universe and that kind of thing. But is there someone or you look back at your time, maybe in acting classes or, you know, whatever, that you sort of got some advice and some different things that have happened that you're still sort of kind of clinging to? Yeah, Um, I think... I think of all of that, um, you know, one of my, uh, I, I instantly go to an acting teacher who's also an actress herself, of course, um, Andrea Frankel. She's actually the only female acting coach that I've ever had. There's, there's like a lots of male acting coaches here down in Louisiana, not too many, but, uh, but Andrea, she's actually up in Canada now, uh, New Orleans area. Louisiana is her home, but uh, she's living in Canada and working there uh, in Montreal, I believe. But um, Andrea Frankel, yeah, she 
I just feel like we've connected that, that female bond. And I have always told her that as well. Um, I think every, a lot of things that she said, I took so many notes in her class and a lot of things that she said always ring, ring back and ring true to my life. Um, so gosh, I, yeah, of course I thank her for that. There are certain role that you're like, man, one day I would love to have that opportunity. <laughs> Like any role ever? Sure, well, we'll start there. We can always go down whatever <laughs> whatever rabbit hole you want to go. Down. I can pick out a Marvel character. Marvel's universe is so big. If you just hang around long enough, Terry, they'll call you with something. I mean, this is incredible. They got movies out to 2020. So <laughs> <laughs> you can have as great aspirations, and reality is we're in a time where that can become reality. Yeah. You know, I, I'm such an open, open person <laughs> that I just hope that I, you know, I should probably set a goal of like, this is the character I want and should totally work for that. But gosh, I'm so open and I'm so easy and I'm just like, yeah, I'm just happy to be working and life is good. And I got my cute little dog here. Um, I'm an animal lover. Sorry. Uh, (laughs) You're fine. And Um, Hunter's okay too. We're okay with him too. (laughs) (laughs) Did he talk about our dog too? I, I would have to replay the whole interview because, you know, sometimes this is not the part that we play live during our podcasts and broadcasts <laughs> and stuff. So I'd have to play the whole thing or you can go to the site and you can look up the Hunter Burke interview and see if he mentions the dog. But if he, if, if, you know what, if he did not, shame on him for not shame mentioning the dog. For yes. not mentioning our dog, Finn. Oh. <sighs> what is going on in the household? We're going to have to uh, have Hunter back. He's going we'll to have to. where the love is. We'll have I'm, to atone. I'm <laughs> well, it's been great talking to you and getting to know you. We are definitely going to keep an eye out for Terry Weibel of The Walking Dead, of course, air Sunday nights on AMC. <clears throat> Biggest show on television. Hardly needs me to preface that. Uh, obviously, next <laughs> summer, Terminator Genesis with just a monster cast. Obviously, Arnold Schwarzenegger is returning to reprise his role, and there's tons of technology. Just a big blockbuster directed by Thor, Dark, the Dark World director, Alan Taylor. He's also from Game of Thrones. So Terry is definitely going to be on the map, whether she wants to be or not. And she can <laughs> wait for that. You'll you'll think of me when they stop you in the grocery store and the frozen food and go, wait a minute. Were you on Walking Dead? <laughs> no, I don't know what you're talking about. Walking Dead? I haven't heard of Walking Dead. What is that? Is that? What, is that? what, what kind of that. show is that? Is this like a health show? What is that all about? I don't understand. Like sleepwalking? I don't what does understand. that mean? Who Who's in that? <laughs> uh, yeah, but it's going to happen. And if nothing else, you know what? It's a good time and it's a good ride. And I'm definitely pleased for you and happy for you. So it's great to get a chance to get a chance to talk to you. Thank you so much, Brandon. It was a pleasure.